Hi there, it's Donna from Taffy Crafting and I've got a lovely cute little box um, from a piece of white A4 cardstock. I've been able to make two of these. So I've done this one. It fits lovely and lovely and tight, snug. Um, nice for putting perhaps a little bit of jewellery or maybe some chocolate. Um, just anything really that's, you know, you can change the measurements of this if you wanted that box to be deeper. But there are some intricate measurements on here. Um, I've been inspired by Angelina from Intertwine Designs. I would thoroughly recommend that you go and check her out. And she makes some gorgeous projects. There are some really complicated ones and there are some simpler projects as well. So I went for a simple one because I'm filming this late at night. Um, she'd popped up on my YouTube um, subscription feed and... I thought oh, I have to have a go at one of her projects and I've I've actually made a few of them. Um, so we've got this one that's made with basic white, thick basic white cardstock with the perfectly penciled designer series paper. And because there was enough to make two out of one sheet of A4, I then cut out another um, few pieces to make another box. And I'm going to do that one using the Butterfly Kisses DSP. So I've got a piece of card. Now, the reason this is already cut out and scored is that my first video, I mucked it up with my DSP. Um, so I've got two pieces of card. This one measures five inches by three and a half. And then I've got another piece that measures, it's slightly smaller, it measures four and 13 sixteenths by three and five sixteenths. Why do we have such intricate measurements? It's because the lid has got to be ever so slightly bigger than the base so that it fits nice and tight. If they were the same size, it would be too much of a tight fit and the card, the, the base would buckle underneath and it would bow. So with this piece that is five inches by three and a half inches, we've scored at three quarters of an inch on all four sides. So you put it in the scoreboard and you score at three quarters of an inch turn it three quarters of an inch, turn it three quarters of an inch, turn it, you get the drift, and three quarters of an inch. With a smaller piece of card, you put this in the scoreboard. I'll show you what I've done with this in a moment. You put this in the scoreboard and you score at five eighths of an inch, turn five eighths of an inch, turn five eighths of an inch. You get it, turn five eighths of an inch. Start off with the base and before we do anything else we are going to fold and burnish those score lines so we fold them and we burnish and burnish is flattening them we're making those folds nice and crisp and we do this before we stick any paper on it uh, my lid I've already folded and burnished them um, and I've done all the cutting out as well. Let me show you what we're going to do with this. So these four squares will form the tabs which will put our base and our lid together. So with this score line here, let me try and bring this a bit closer. Now because we've scored it on the scoreboard and if you did it on the trimmer as well, you get a bit of a, you've got a groove and you want to cut right on the left hand side of that groove into that corner and then at an angle you're going to cut up into that corner so it creates this kind of wedge and then you'll create another angle here like that and you're going to do that on all four sides on the on the long side so we cut up, this one is to the right of that groove. So it's right on the right of that groove. And we'll wedge into it there. It doesn't have to be any particular angle there. We're just making a, um, a tab out of that. Okay, so we do that. So I'll do this nice and slowly so that you can follow. Those of you that make lots and lots of boxes, you've probably 
scrolled past this bit. But I used to remember what it was like when I first started making gift boxes and cards and I really wanted to look at what the crafter was doing if they did it really quickly it's like what have you done I can't see and I'd be trying to rewind look can't see it rewind look can't see it so I'm doing this nice and slowly because it's just easy to scroll on if you know what you're doing so that is what it should look like on both your lid and your base so this is the base. We're not going to decorate this. You might want to put something inside if you wanted to. You could line the inside of it. I've got some paper there that will go quite nicely with that, but I'm not going to. But you could. So that's the inside, because that's where we folded these into. But we're going to turn it round. Now you can do this with liquid glue if you like. My adhesive of choice for this is the tear and tape. I don't know why it's my adhesive of choice. It's just what I prefer to use for box making. So I'm just going to put those on there like that. And where I'm putting this tape is right up to that score line there. And then there's no gap. One more in there and I'm going to show you in a moment what we're going to do with that and we're going to do exactly the same with the lid but we'll decorate it first. Now I use the take your pick tool and I love this little pointy thing this is the thing that I use the most and I use it for picking up the backing tape on this so I'll do that on all four of those And then with each of these tabs, you're going to bring it in behind or in front of, however you want to see that. To me, that's behind um, the this bit, the long edge. And this cut edge here has to match that fold line. So you bring it up nice and carefully. And then as soon as they match, press it down. Now, you might decide that liquid glue is the best for that, but then you have to hold it and hold it and hold it. Um, but when you become a bit more confident with that, you can use um, the uh, dispenser glue or like the glue on a roll um, or this tear and tape. So fold in, go behind that long strip, cut edge meets folded edge. Put it behind. Bring this one forward and get the cut edge to meet that folded edge. And then this one, this always gets kind of a bit awkward. Cut edge meets folded edge. That was a process when I first started crafting that I had to watch about a hundred times before I, thought, before I thought, oh yeah, I get that. I get what's going on now. So there's the base of our box. And you can decorate the base if you want to, like I said, or I'll put something on the, in the inside. Um, but that's where you're going to put your gift. I have folded and burnished and cut out all of the other little bits that I needed on the lid in exactly the same way. But what I'm going to do, I've got this Butterfly Kisses designer series paper. And where my video had gone wrong before is that I was trying to be really, really clever in cutting these bits of DSP and it just wasn't going well because I was trying to get it to match all the way through. So this is where these are going to go like this. Now the sizes of this DSP, I do have a blog post that goes with this, the sizes of the DSP, the middle one here is two inches by three and a half inches. Watch the direction of your DSP. The two side ones are half an inch by three and a half inches. 
and the top and the bottom one are two inches by half an inch. Watch your direction. And I'm going to stick these on with liquid glue, but you could use any glue you like. Oh, mine's gummed up. There we go. Don't get it too close to the edge, otherwise it just oozes out. And they should have just a little bit of a gap all the way around. We are going to see a little bit of a gap between each of these bits of DSP. I've got sticky fingers now. So do this before we put the box together or put the lid together rather. This paper is so pretty and what I've done differently than what I've done in the past is I've not bought all of the papers because I find that those papers that I'm not as keen on end up wasting lots of them I don't get them used so I was determined not to do that this time and just buy the papers that I wanted there is a link to my shop in the description bar and you can go and have a look and if you um, the shop is kind of sectioned off into different um, different products so there will be one and it's called paper and packaging if you go in there it has all of the colours of the cardstock and all the different papers as well. I've got too much glue in that, that's got a bit of seepage. So I'm going to be very careful pushing that down otherwise I'll be covered in it. So there is the lid of our box. Now just as I did with the other one I'm going to be careful because this glue is still wet. I'm going to put tear and tape on here. I've got lots and lots of lovely new products to show you. Um, I haven't even really looked at the stamp sets yet. Um, so I'll have a few of those projects coming out in the next couple of weeks. I much prefer using card and paper. And then with the odd sentiment, but I'm going to push out of that old comfort zone and start doing some more stamping. I'm sure I've said that before, but I need to do that. I need to show you these stamp sets and all the lovely new colours we've got. Right, let's take these bits off. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this as I did with the base. So the tab goes behind the side and hold it in. Tab goes behind, cut edge meets the folded edge. And then again that way. So there is our lid, a pretty lid as well. So we would put our gift in there, on goes the lid, and it just fits nicely. That I'm holding that, that's not dropping down, but also the sides aren't buckling underneath that. It's just a nice, nice, perfect fit. Now you could finish that off with some ribbon, but actually for this project, what I'm going to do is put a nice little sentiment on there, a little weeny weeny one. So I picked up a stamp set called Simply Succulents. I used to use this a lot and then I stopped using it for some reason. Um, and I want to use the thanks sentiment here. So it's this one and I'm hoping it's going to fit in there because that's the one that I want and I think it will. And I'm going to get, I've got some scrap of white card here. It should fit there, yep. So ink block, stamp, and Starry Sky ink. 
love this colour. Absolutely love it. Stamps beautifully. And then with the smaller punch or the smaller oval, just going to line that up in there. that on like that with some dimensionals and I'm going to decorate it oops I'm going to decorate it with oh sorry it's a horrible noise I'm going to decorate it with some gems so let's get those out Find some. I think we'll go with the champagne basic jewels. Put one of those on either side. I get my box. And I'm going to get a mini stamping dimensional and put I'm going to put three on here. I'm not going to decorate this with any ribbon. But you could put ribbon around it if you wanted to. And I'm going to pop that on there like that. So there we have a little box, which fits quite nicely like that. If you put things in there and you found that the weight of it was causing the lid and the base to separate, you could put some twine around it, um, you know, quite prettily or put some ribbon around it just to keep it all together. How pretty does that look? So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you to Angelina. She probably won't see this, but I have left her a message on her blog to thank her very much for inspiring me over the last few days with all of the things that I've made. And um, yeah, I hope this inspires you. Please go and have a look at my blog. There are also two other crafters with me, Crafty Karen Designs and Vicky Lou Designs. If you go to my blog post, you'll see what they've been making as well with our 3D Thursday theme. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back again soon with another project. Bye bye.